Hello, this is Keith here, and this is lesson three of the Hello World series of my HE86 assembly programming tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at MS DOS, but we're going to be looking at things a little bit differently. Now, normally in my tutorials we use cross compilation, which is where we compile on one system and then we run on another. In the case of my tutorials, we always compile in Windows and then we transfer to an emulator and run on the emulator. Now, today we're actually going to try doing things natively all using MS DOS. So, we're going to use the Massum 6.11 assembler on the MS DOS system, and we're going to write, assemble, and then run our program entirely using MS DOS. So, in theory, we wouldn't need Windows at all. Now, of course, today we're going to do all of this in DOSBox, but in theory, if we had a real DOS machine and no Windows machine at all, we could do everything on that DOS machine, although I would have a hard time capturing it all on OBS Studio on a DOS machine. So, anyway, we're going to try this out and we're going to be looking at how to install, run our sample Hello World on Massum, and hopefully it will all go okay. So we'll be doing everything from our DOSBox system today. So let's go over to our dev screen and let's take a look at what we're going to need to do to get started. Okay, so we've got no source file within um, Notepad++ for I think the first time ever really because we're not going to use Notepad++. So we're going to do everything with um, Massum. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Massum. Now I've got this copy here in a RAR file. There's a link on my website to where I got this. So someone's uploaded it to SourceForge. So that's what we're going to be using today. So if we go into this RAR file here, you will see that we have a variety of files here. Now we've got the disk files, and these are what we're going to need. There's some patches which I've not tried, and there's this file fatco.exe, which uh, apparently isn't a virus. It looks extremely suspicious. So um, I tried it out on a um, test VM, and it's just some BBS um, animation with some music. But um, we're going to we're not going to download. We're not going to extract that because I don't think it's worth the risk, even though it is apparently harmless. Anyway, weird files aside, we've got what we need. So we're just going to extract all of these files here into a folder on our DOSBox C drive. Now I've got a folder called Massum Inst. Um, you can see the raw file is already there, but we're just going to extract those. And now we're just waiting for the transfer to occur here. So we'll just wait for this to finish here a moment. See all the processing power being used up by my video capture, maybe. I don't know. So now we've got our files in a folder that is basically going to be accessible by our DOSBox. Now, our DOSBox has a nasty habit of caching files. So we will just close and reopen it here. And that should allow us to see the contents of that drive. Now we'll just go over to our zoom window here. Where is it? Here we go. So if we now do CD Massum inst here and DIR, you can see we've now got the contents of all of our disks here. So if we go into disk one, now this is the correct format. Uh, some, I'm not sure about this one, but some programs don't mind if you combine all the disks into one folder and others don't like that. Now this one certainly doesn't mind them being split out. So we're going to just have it set up in this way here. My window just jumped there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to press enter to continue on this first screen and we're going to install using the defaults so that will work just fine this second option here. And we're just going to install to drive C and select no changes here. Now things might be a little bit slow here. So I'm just going to speed up the number of cycles. My window keeps jumping here. Well, I'll move it back in a second. I've just increase the cycles here. So I'm just using um, Control and F12 there to increase the cycles a bit so that we don't wait around too long. And now our program is installing. Now the program installs and it installs the command line assembly tools that we can use, but it also installs a program called the Programmer's Workbench, PWB, which is basically a um, text-based interface which allows us to um, work with things with a graphical user interface, if you can call a text-based interface one of those, a bit very much like the MS-DOS editor, Quick Basic, if you're familiar with those. So um, that, that's what we're going to use today. And we're going to learn how to set that up because it needs some paths specifying. And the paths, uh, uh, it offers to add them to the autoexec.bat, but, um, but um, DOS box doesn't really use autoexec bat anyway. So um, we're not going to do that. We're going to set up a batch file to that for us. So it says we've succeeded here. And then it's telling us about this new vars.bat. And it's this new vars.bat we're going to take advantage of. And it's in the folder called bin R. So we're going to make our own batch file and we're going to use that. And it's do blabber, blabbering on about some other things here. So at this point, we can just exit. So we're done now. 
Okay, so we've installed now, and what we're going to do next is we're going to create a batch file to start our program, our programmer's workbench up. So what we need to do is we need to just create a batch file with these two lines here. Now you could do this with Notepad in your Windows and you could edit the C drive of your DOS box, that would be fine, but we're going to be a bit more um, a bit more old school here, if you will. We're going to use edit.com, which is the old DOS program that I've copied onto my machine here. So this is what we're going to use. And so we're first going to have to call the batch file that was created by the installer. So we're just going to type call. And it's called binr slash new vars dot bat. That's right. It, 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 it was shown in uppercase, but of course DOS is not case sensitive, so that should work fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do bin R, which is a folder, and we're going to run pwb.exe. Now that's the name of the work programmer's workbench that is the environment that we're going to use to edit our program. And we're going to save this as pwb.bat. Okay. So we've now saved our program there. Now, one thing we're going to do next, because I'm, I'm not going to um, make you endure see me, seeing me in, type in the entire program from my tutorials again, we are going to just make a slight tweak to it because it doesn't quite work. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the DOS Hello World that I covered in my tutorials before, and this is the this is copied from my book. I think it's the same in both. And we're just going to put this in our new Massum611 folder, which is the folder created by the installer, the same folder as our pwb.bat. And then we will restart DOSBox Portable here. Okay, because as I said before, um, what, while it does, in a lot of cases, find files, if you create them after loading DOSBox, sometimes the um, directory listings are cached and things. So just for safety, if you will, I'm restarting the program there. And now we're going to reload. So we're just going into our Massum611 folder. And now we are going to type in PWB. And that's, of course, a batch file in the current folder. So now our in editing environment has loaded up here. And what we're going to do now is going to file open and we are going to open the DOS hello world that is um, straight out of the example from my book. And as I say, I think it's identical to the one on the website at the moment, but um, we're going to run this. So what we want to do to compile this is um, we could go to project and select compile. Interesting, it says compile, not assemble there, but anyway. Um, and then we're going to select execute here. Now this will offer to let us rebuild the target and we're going to say rebuild all. And the program is now compiling, but we got an error and some warnings. So if we click on view results, we'll see what those are. And then we can just maximize these messages here and see what the problems are. So we got two problems. Now, firstly, and my Zoom is not working properly because I've not got a real mouse here. So firstly, um, it's saying that there should be an end at the end of my program. So that, that is the problem. And the second one is on line 24 here. You can see this says 24 just here. That's line 24 and there's an invalid use of register. Now I've figured out the problems here. So we know how to fix these. So if we just minimize our code here and go, go to our program here. And if we just go down to the bottom here and we just put in, that is the end there. Sometimes it's allowing us to scroll infinitely down there. It's a bit weird. So if we just type in end here, that will um, placate that end problem there. And on line 24, now you can see at the bottom corner of the screen down here, the line number. So if we go to 24 is here. Now, I don't know if I've made a syntax mistake or if the assembler I'm using is more tolerant of mistakes or if um, they change the syntax over time. But it seems that Massum is insisting on having this DS segment before the square brackets here. So I just need to change that there. And now if we do run and execute again and select rebuild all, well, it's asking us if we want to save changes. Well, yes, we do. Okay. Well, what, we've got another error but it, or a warning. And if we do view results this time, well, you will see, we just go down here. We've got to the linking stage and we've got a warning saying program has no starting address and also warning file is not suitable for exe pack. 
well, I don't know what EXE pack is. I assume it's a compressor. I didn't want to use it anyway. So we will just select execute here now. And you can see here, we've got at the bottom of the screen here, hello world exclamation mark, strike any key when ready. And that is what our test program is supposed to do. So we have there successfully, oh, we've there successfully down transferred our test program So we've successfully there transferred our test program from our Windows machine into the virtual C drive, loaded it into Massum, and then made a few tweaks to it and then compiled and run it and seen the results. Now, of course, the big problem with uh, developing on a real machine, if you will call an emulator that like this, is if the results of our program crash the machine, it's going to take us a long time to reboot the virtual machine, reload our program, and hopefully we saved it and things, and get back to where we were a few months before, which is why I would certainly recommend um, using the cross-compilation I usually do with Notepad++, because unless you make some horrendous mistake that causes the emulator to trash your machine, you will not suffer any kind of data loss or interruption if you crash the virtual machine. So that, that is the disadvantage, and this actually happened during my testing. I'd been messing around with the uh, the other copy of the Hello World. Um, I'd been putting some test code in for some documentation I was writing, testing some commands and things. Forgot to take them out, and it was indeed crashing, not just the um, Hello World example. The Hello World example was running, but then when it tried to return, the MS-DOS operating system or, or something else had corrupted, and you could no longer get back to the programmer's workbench, and your only option was to reset the DOS box, and thus go through the startup procedure again, reload your file, try and figure out where you were, get, get everything back up the way you were working. So as I say, there are definitely disadvantages to this way of doing things. And I would only really recommend it as a curiosity or if you are super hardcore or programming on real hardware, of course, if you don't have, for example, the ability to transfer your files from your, your Windows machine to your physical machine because it's a five and a quarter drive or something. But anyway, as I say, I thought this was a curious curiosity and I was, I wanted to have a go with Massum, uh, the real Massum, and just see what it was like because whereas some of these very old machines are really quite impossible to work on, you know, for memory limitations and things, the, you know, MS-DOS and DOSBox are very powerful, and I, I do have some nostalgia for that way of working, although I never programmed um, I never programmed assembly on 8086. I did a lot of Quig Basic and we had Visual Basic for DOS and I used to have a lot of fun with those. So I wanted to try my assembly programming out on something closer to real hardware. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. As I say, there's a link on my website that you can go to to get the Massum um, files. And if you do a search on the internet for um, Massum 611 or on Archive.org, I've seen it on there as well. So I'm sure you can get a, a copy of the older disks if you want to have a go with this. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.